Hi, AP Calculus students. Mr. Duranko here with your first lesson for uh, this period after the break in this crazy coronavirus era. We uh, have an AP test that's coming. They don't know the date yet, and so I will pass that along to you as soon as I know, and that will kind of shape, kind of shape what we do for the rest of the year, and so we're going to remain flexible. Classes start now, though, here at Oak Hill, and so I'm going to give you the next section, and you're going to get some assessments. I'm going to go real slow uh, since this distance learning thing is new for me. A lot of you guys have done this already through Honors Pre-Calc or the online pre-calc course. But we're going to go slow, and I'm going to make it somewhat easier for you since chances are the remaining topics that we cover will not be on the AP test because of this coronavirus issue. So hopefully if you just watch the videos and do the homework, you should get good grades through the rest of the year and we'll see what happens when it comes time for finals. Anyway, the Next topic that we're going to do is chapter 7 in our book, Applications of Integration. And uh, the first topic is finding areas between two curves. And this is really quite easy, uh, quite an easy application of integrals. If we wanted to find the area between the f of x and g of x, well, if we integrate uh, from a to b uh, of f of x, we'll get that area. And if we integrate from a to b of g of x, we'll get that area. And if we subtract those two areas, we'll get the area between the curves. And so that's the topic that we're going to talk about today, finding the area between two curves. And it's just merely the integration of f of x minus g of x really quite simple. I'm going to show you four different cases of which you might encounter so you're not frustrated if it's not exactly um, how I describe it here, although it is for the most part. You just need to use some common sense. Uh, the four cases are, well, the one I just talked about, finding the area between the curve. This is a secant squared curve, and this is a sine x curve. And so if we wanted to find the area between those two curves, we just take the integral uh, from 0 to pi over 4 of the secant squared curve minus the sine curve. And we can find the integral of that. We can find the integral of that. And if we evaluate it from 0 to pi over 4, subtract them, we get our answer. And so that shouldn't be too difficult. Hopefully you all remember how to do the definite integrals. If we want to find the area between these two curves, uh, these are just two random curves. Looks like a parabola and a line. Uh, sometimes we won't know the limits of integration. We don't know what this point is or what that point is. It looks like negative 1 and 2, but you'd want to find those points on your calculator using the... Uh, intersect option and to make sure that you have those right so you can find the proper area between those two curves. And so that's another case that <clears throat> isn't too difficult. The third case is where we have boundaries that change. And for instance, if you needed to find the area bound by the functions y equals square root of x, y equals x minus 2 in the x-axis, if you plot those, you'll see that you can't just do this one minus this one because while that would give you the area from 2 to 4, the B region, um, you wouldn't get the right area in this region because it says bound by the x-axis. And so this area A would just be the integral of the square root function. And if you add that area to this one, which would be the integral of the square root function minus the line function, you get that total area. And so watch out where your boundaries are changing. And finally, 
it's possible that you might have to integrate with respect to y. The first big clue on this is that you could give you the functions in terms of y. Uh, these two functions, 3 minus y squared and y plus 1, uh, look like this. And so this is the shaded region that we have to find. But you can see if we do sideways rectangles instead of up and down rectangles, we can just merely do the integral of, let's see, this function here is the g of y function. That's bigger than the f of y function in this interval. And so if we subtract them like this and then take the integral, we'll get that shaded region. If I had to do that over here, you can see it would be a mess. It would be the top one minus the bottom one until we got to this point right here. And then it's, what is that? The top one and the bottom one are the same function. You'd have to play around with that to get that to work out. And so you can see it's much easier to just integrate with respect to y. And well, this one surely is the trickiest case, but hopefully this example, these pictures and this, these functions come right out of your book. You should be able to handle it, no problem. I'll give you an assignment that will use all four of these cases and um, give you a few days to play around with that. And hopefully everybody will be successful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, and I will see you on the next video. Have a good few days. Bye.